In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to create an N8N workflow that will upload documents from a Google Drive folder into a vector database like Pinecone Vector Store. This is going to be the foundation for any type of RAG system you're trying to build using vector databases. And this is an excellent tutorial to get into N8N, start building workflows, and figure out how this RAG chatbot vector database stuff actually works. What's up? My name's Kirk. I teach people how to build automations. I run a school community all about teaching automations, how to speed up productivity and enhance your workflow. If you like my my videos and want to support what I'm doing, you can check the link down below where you can join my school community. I have all of my automation templates and blueprints up for download. I have a bunch of tools and resources in the classroom, and you can watch all of my step-by-step -step tutorials on how to build automations and start innovating workflows for yourself. Let's jump in. Okay, so I'm in my N8N dashboard. I'm gonna come up here to create a new workflow. First node is going to be, I'll click the big plus, type in Google Drive. I'm gonna select the Google Drive node here and we wanna find this trigger on changes involving a specific folder. Click on that. And now you're gonna to wanna to set up your Google Drive credential right here. To set up your credential, you can click this link to follow the docs. N8N has incredible documentation you can follow this tutorial here or you can click the link in the description of this video i have the full tutorial on setting up your google drive connection in my school community you can check it out over there once your google drive connection is set up with your google drive credential we can fill out the rest of this node so we're gonna leave all these settings just as they are and for the folder we can select the folder from our actual google drive so i'm gonna go into my google drive okay this is my drive these are my folders and in this youtube demos folder i'm gonna create a new folder here we'll create a new folder I'll call it n8n automation click create click on share for general access, drop this down, click anyone with the link and click done. Now we've got our folder that we can use for automation. Jump back into N8N. In this drop down here, click on that. I'll type in the search bar N8N automation. It's gonna pop up with that folder here. So I actually have two N8N automation folders. It's important to know which folder is which. I've distinguished this one here with a little emoji and this is the brand new one I just created in my Google Drive. So I'm gonna click on that folder for watch for. Click here, drop this down, we'll say file created. Now we can go ahead and test this event, but we first need to add some kind of information into that folder. I'm gonna pop over to ChatGPT and just have ChatGPT make me a fake document for this automation. I'm gonna have it create an Airbnb listing. So here's my prompt, create a fake Airbnb listing for the Phoenix area, provide all the information a guest might need to know to stay at this property. ChatGPT is doing a pretty good job creating this fake listing here. Here. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. I'll just open up a blank Google Doc, come back over to ChatGPT and copy this whole fake listing into my Google Doc. Great, so I've got this fake listing and now we have a file to add into that Google Drive folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this document into that Google Drive folder. I'll just name it something like that. Dropped that folder in so we can see now in my N8N automation folder, we have the Desert Oasis Doc. Cool, let's jump back into N8N and test this event. Click the button to test and that node has executed successfully. We can see now in our output, everything that came through from Google Drive. Cool, now you can click out of this node or click back to Canvas. We can set up our next node, click the plus, Type in the search bar here, we're gonna type in Google Drive, click on Google Drive, and we want to choose download file. Now what's great about N8N is you can see over here on the left, all the properties coming over from the first node or Google Drive trigger. This is the current node settings, and then over here we would have the output from our current node. So you should have your same Google Drive connection pop in here. We can leave all of the settings the same, and for the file, let's change this to by ID. Now we can scroll down and find our file ID all the way down to the spaces array. Look for the spaces, your Google Drive, and we have that ID coming through for that file. I'm gonna click and drag this schema over here into the ID field, and now we've linked our ID. Now we have a couple different views to 
choose from when working with information in N8N. We can use the schema view, which is something more akin to make.com, mapping these schema over into the fields over here. We also have the table view and the JSON view. So you can see all of the JSON for the schema just like that. Now, just as an example, I'll delete out this mapping here. We can click and drag the JSON the same way we click and drag the schema, link that in there just like that. So just a preference on what type of view you want to use. I prefer the schema. I'm not a coder, so this is easy to see these elements just like that. Cool. Now we can test this step to download our file and we can see we've got our output over here. We can actually click this button to download the file to our computer. Take a look at the schema view over here and we can see everything has come across and it's that same file or desert oasis retreat. Cool. I'm going to click out of this node. Let's add the next node. Click the plus. I'll search vector store. These are the available vector stores we can use in NAN. This is what NAN has built in and has integrations for. So the one I am using is the pinecone vector store, but you can see these other options. If you're using any of these tools, go ahead and use whichever tool you want to use here. For this video, I'm going to use the pinecone vector store click on that and we're going to add documents to the vector store. Now, same thing as Google Drive, you're going to want to create your API key, your credential to log into your vector store. So I'm going to go ahead, go log into my Pinecone account. Here I am in my Pinecone account. What you're going to need to start off is over here in the API keys. Click on that. Come up here to create new API key. You can name your API key. I'll name mine N8N demo. You can name yours whatever you want click create key and it's going to show you your API key. You're going to want to copy this, keep this safe. I'm going to copy my API key, click close, jump back into N8N and now we can set up this connection here. I have my credential already set up. I'm going to click this drop down, click create new credential, paste that API key we just copied from Pinecone right there. You can name your connection right here. Come up here, click the little pencil icon. I'll name mine Pinecone API demo. You can name yours whatever you want then click save. Now your credential is set up. We can close this window and fill out this node. We want to get that information coming from Google Drive into the Pinecone vector store. So we want to insert documents. We can leave that setting the same. We want to choose our index. So let's jump over to Pinecone and set up our index. So back in Pinecone, I'm going to come to database indexes and we can create a new index. Click on this button to create a new index. If you don't have any indexes in your Pinecone vector store, your create index button might be in the middle of your screen right here. I'm going to click create index. Now I'll name this index N8N demo. You can name yours whatever you want. For configuration, I'll choose the text embedding three small. For capacity mode, leave it serverless. For the cloud provider, choose AWS. For the region, you can stick with Virginia and click create index. Here it is. This is your new index. So now that we have our index, we could jump back into any N and choose that index from the list. Drop this down. And here's my new index, the N8N demo. Now something I like to do to keep my files organized is add a namespace. So under options, I'll click add option, choose pinecone namespace, and you can enter in a namespace that you want for your data. You can think of this as basically a folder where all of the relevant data you need together is stored in that particular folder. For example, Airbnb listings. I'll name this namespace Airbnb listings. Great. So now we can test this step. However, if you do, we'll see we're missing a few things. This is where N8N gets a little confusing. We have to add more nodes to this node to get it to function properly. So you can see those things we need down here. You can also exit out of this node and see in order for this Pinecone vector store to work, we need an embedding and a document loader. So let's click on this plus here to select our embedding. This brings us the list of available embeddings we can use in N8N. I'm going to choose the open OpenAI embeddings since I use OpenAI. Once again, we'll need to create a new credential for OpenAI. I have the tutorial available in the school community. If you want to jump over there, check out the full tutorial on how to set up your OpenAI credential. Otherwise, you can just click the docs here, follow along. It's 
pretty straightforward to set up your OpenAI credential and get this connection set up. Once your connection is set up, we can choose the model. We'll leave it as text embedding three small and click out of the node. Now we have our embeddings node. I'm going to click the plus here. And this is the list of available document loaders. I'll choose the default data loader for type of data. Drop this down, choose binary. And now if we notice at the bottom of this node, we're going to need to attach the text splitter. You can click the plus here or you can click out of the node and see what's going on. Yes, in fact, we need a text splitter. Click on the plus there. This is the list of available text splitters in NAN. Let's just choose the recursive character text splitter. Now, what this does is break up your documents and data into chunk sizes. The way things get stored in a vector database is a tool like Pinecone will take all of your data take your document, break it down into chunks, and then organize those chunks into the database automatically. So if you have larger documents and data sets, you'll want to set your chunk sizes to something bigger. If you have smaller documents, you can set your chunk sizes to something smaller. For this example, I'll probably go with a chunk size of 500 and a chunk overlap of 50. I'll click out of this note. Our pinecone vector store is finished. We could test the workflow and get this vector store node moving data through it. So I'm going to double click on the pinecone vector store node to come back into it. I'm gonna click test step and we've got that data coming through and uploading to the pinecone vector store. Excellent, I'm gonna click outside of this node and we can see everything has turned green. We can double check the pinecone vector store. I'm gonna jump over there. Now in my N8N demo index, we can see now we have a record count of seven. Everything got automatically loaded in here and stored, broken up by chunks and tucked away. So if we come over here in the indexes and in our index here, we can see our namespaces. If I click on that, we can see the namespace that I entered in into that Pinecone Vector Store node, the Airbnb listings. And so we have a number of vectors. These are our records stored away in our Airbnb listings namespace. You can store different documents, different information into different namespaces and sort and organize your data that way inside of Pinecone. Keep everything organized for yourself. Great, now we have everything in Pinecone. We can start to interact with that data, building chatbots, building rag systems. You are free to go and start using this information in your Pinecone vector database. However, I'm going to add one more step here, something that makes data retrieval a little bit easier for RAG chatbots. Now, everything is working and coming through. However, I'm going to come over here, click the three little dots and click delete. To delete a namespace is going to make you enter in the namespace to get rid of it. So let's actually load our data, our document into this vector database a little bit differently. So here is my fake Airbnb listing document. This is all the information I want the guests to have access to via a RAG chatbot system or something like that. Now to make data retrieval a little bit easier, I'm gonna copy this entire document come back into chat GPT, paste my document in there and write this prompt something like this is a document. This is a document for an Airbnb listing. I want to upload this to the Pinecone vector store. Can you format the data to make it easily retrievable with a RAG system? Something like that. Now, what ChatGPT will actually do here is organize it into a structured JSON. This is going to make retrieval a lot easier. And there we go. We've got a nice JSON. I'm going to take this one step further and say something like, is this the best way to write out this document? ChatGPT will come up with the reasons why this is excellent. It could also provide some suggestions, things to add and areas to improve. There we go. Last prompt here is make any improvements or modifications for easy retrieval without changing the context of the document or information provided, please write out the JSON for me to copy. So this little workflow is going to give you the best overall way to structure your documents, structure your data to load it into a vector store for retrieval, right? Specifically the Pinecone vector store in this case. There it is, a refined document, nice and organized into JSON objects for retrieval. I'm going to click 
copy, copy this code, come back into my desert oasis document. Now I'd probably want to store this information on a separate document, but for this tutorial, I'll delete out my guest facing document and provide my vector database document. So here it is the same document desert oasis. This is the one I want to reload into my pinecone vector store. Come back into N8N. Something we haven't done yet is save the workflow. I'm going to come up here to name it Google to pinecone, click save, click test workflow, and we can watch it run through with that new document. You can check the pinecone vector store. Let's refresh this page and we can see our new Airbnb listings namespace is back with 13 new vectors. There we go. Very simple workflow to upload documents from Google Drive into your pinecone vector store. There we go. That's it for this one. Great job figuring it out, getting your connections set up. This automation is pretty fundamental for uploading documents from Google Drive into a vector database to be interactable with some kind of RAG system. Once you have this one figured out, it opens the gateway for so many more automations, which you can check out in my school community by clicking the link below. If you join my community, you'll have access to all of my templates and blueprints and eight and workflows available for download. I've got a bunch of resources to check out and step by step tutorials on how to build automation workflows for yourself or for your business. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. It helps me decide what content you guys like, what you want to see and what you want me to make more of. So thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the group and I'll see you in the next one.